Of course, I rise today uh, to move this motion on World Health Day and recognise that each year the World Health Organisation celebrates World Health Day to promote global awareness of the importance of health and to shine a light on a specific theme that impacts people all over the world. The theme for World Health Day this year is Our Planet, Our Health. The World Health Organisation is urging all nations and societies to take action to keep people and the planet healthy and to foster wellbeing across society. The health and wellbeing of people and the planet are closely interlinked, and climate change is a health issue as much as it is an environmental one. According to the World Health Organisation, environmental factors are responsible for almost a quarter of the global burden of disease. This government believes that everyone should have the right to live in a healthy environment. And I thank Ms Clay for introducing a separate motion to this effect earlier this year in response to the United Nations Human Rights Council declaration that the right to a healthy environment is a human right. It is timely that this year's World Health Day recognises the link between our health, our planet, our rights and the need for equity. The ACT government is committed to ensuring that the health and wellbeing of all Canberrans is at the forefront of our decision making through the ACT wellbeing framework. Wellbeing is about all Canberrans having the opportunity and ability to lead lives of personal and community value, with qualities such as good health, time to enjoy the things that matter, in an environment that promotes personal growth and is sustainable. The World Health Day 2022 theme, Our Planet, Our Health, serves to remind us that more can be done to mitigate the impacts of climate change and adapt to these locally, nationally and globally. The World Health Organisation notes that globally more than 90 per cent of people breathe, breathe unhealthy air resulting from the burning of fossil fuels. A heating world is seeing mosquitoes spread disease further and faster than ever before. And Mr Assistant Speaker, we of course are seeing the impact of mosquito, bread, uh, mosquito spread disease in the recent outbreak of Japanese encephalitis virus uh, in Australia and the human and animal health impacts of that, as well as the cost to society of then ameliorating and addressing those impacts. Extreme weather events, land degradation and water scarcity are displacing people and affecting their health. Population and, oh, sorry, pollution and plastics are found at the bottom of our deepest oceans and have made their way into our food chain. Food systems that are skewed towards highly processed, unhealthy food and beverages are driving a wave of obesity, increasing cancer and heart disease, but they're also generating a third of global greenhouse gas emissions. The ACT government has been considering and responding to the growing risks of climate change and these impacts on the ACT community and government operations for more than a decade. The ACT government has been preparing for climate change by adopting a variety of policy responses, including the ACT Climate Change Strategy 2019 to 2025 and Canberra's Living Infrastructure Plan, Cool in the City. These strategies focus on actions which set us up to adapt to and mitigate the effects of climate change in the Territory. Mr Assistant Speaker, we are beginning to see the real-world impacts of climate change on Australia and in the ACT. Over the previous four years, we've seen firsthand the environmental and community impacts of extreme heat, bushfires, drought and severe storms in the ACT and the terrible impl impacts of floods across Australia's eastern seaboard. The health impacts of climate change are tangible and significant. These include respiratory and heart disease, mental illness, allergies, injuries, food poisoning and poor nutrition, and are just some of the ways that are changing. These are just some of the ways that a changing climate affects us all. If we want to continue to achieve our shared vision of Canberra being the healthiest place in the world to live and a city of high wellbeing for all, we must continue to develop ways to respond and adapt our health sector to our changing climate and environment. The next five years are vital for increased climate change action. The latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change highlights the need for rapid emission reductions and adaptation to climate impacts. The ACT government will continue to plan and respond to climate change so we can continue to enjoy the high quality of health and wellbeing the ACT provides to its communities. 
The Global Green and Healthy Hospitals Network is an international community of hospitals, healthcare facilities, health systems and health organisations working to achieve measurable outcomes in improving sustainability at their facilities while promoting environmental health in their communities. The ACT government committed to the network in the Climate Change Strategy 2019 to 25 in order to improve sustainability performance and reduce emissions from ACT health facilities. Consistent with this commitment, the ACT Health System has joined the Global Green and Healthy Hospitals Network, which is a project of Healthcare Without Harm, one of the lead organisations involved in COP26. Supported by the World Health Organisation, Healthcare Without Harm and the UNFCCC Climate Champions, the COP26 health program enables transformational change to protect the health of people and the planet. Initiatives under the COP26 health program include building climate resilient health systems, developing low carbon sustainable health systems, adaptable research for health, the inclusion of health priorities in nationally determined contributions, and raising the voice of health professionals as advocates for stronger ambition on climate change. Two of the program's key initiatives support countries in developing climate resilient and low carbon sustainable health systems. The ACT government is investigating how we can commit to the COP26 health program goals and will continue to advocate for this important work at a national level. A key area of concern for the ACT in recent years is the impact of bushfire smoke on air quality. On the 11th of November 2021, the ACT government released its bushfire smoke and air quality strategy, a whole of government approach to prevent, prepare for, respond to and recover from significant bushfire smoke events and our management of the smoke from wood heaters. This strategy sets out key actions over the next four years, including strengthening wood heater emission standards, enhancing air quality monitoring and forecasting, identifying and supporting smoke refuges, and providing economic support for those affected by severe bushfire smoke. And I want to acknowledge uh, Minister Vassarotti for really taking the lead in delivering this strategy and continuing to work on these initiatives. Madam Speaker, uh, Mr Assistant Speaker, the ACT government is also focusing on addressing the risk factors that lead to poorer health outcomes. We're striving to create healthier environments to prevent disease and aiming to support families and children to grow in a healthy community and live long and healthy lives. The Healthy Canberra ACT Preventive Health Plan guides action to reduce the prevalence of chronic disease by addressing these specific risk factors and aiming to support good health across all stages of life. The plan focuses on the promotion of active living, healthy eating and the design of broader environmental factors such as safe and accessible urban spaces, access to nature and other amenities. The preventive health plan includes many initiatives which aim to encourage and support Canberrans to make healthier lifestyle choices, including Kids at Play Active Play, which builds the capacity of early childhood educators to teach fundamental movement skills and to promote active play for children aged three and up. Fresh Tastes, which supports ACT schools to make healthy food and drinks a bigger part of everyday life for Canberra's kids. It's Your Move, which supports student-led health promotion and innovation in ACT high schools. And Healthier Choices Canberra, which supports local businesses and sporting clubs to provide and promote healthier food and drink options. And Mr Assistant Speaker, I want to acknowledge the work of many non-government organisations in this space as well, and particularly uh, the work that Community Services One has been doing to engage with its community about how to grow, cook and cook healthier foods uh, in an efficient and effective way that works for families, uh, making sure that families understand what grows in the ACT and how you can prepare it, giving them the confidence to prepare healthy me meals for their children, but also engaging children and young people in that process. The ACT government is planning for the future as we build the new world-class emergency and critical care facility at the Canberra Hospital. In a first for Australia, uh, the new Canberra Hospital Expansion Critical Services Building will be an all-electric building powered by the ACT's renewable, renewably sourced energy. This aligns with the Territory's climate change strategy that included actions to ensure newly built government buildings are all electric and on the pathway to zero emissions, as well as specifically to reduce emissions from ACT health facilities. The critical services building will continue to deliver on the government's green credentials. The CSB was originally committed to uh, as a four star green star rating. However, we have now increased this commitment to achieve a five star green star rating. 
the design team have adopted a ground-up approach to sustainability with incremental refinements throughout the design development and ongoing enhancements and efficiency gains throughout the design and construction phases towards delivering a cost-effective, sustainable outcome. The integrated design team, including en energy simulation, architecture and facade, is working collaboratively to realise a passive thermal design to reduce peak heating and cooling loads and reduce the demand on the 100% electric infrastructure. These new facilities will build on the substantial emissions reductions Canberra Health Services has achieved of 23 per cent since 2019, while responding to increasing healthcare service delivery needs, supporting the <laughs> ACT government's commitment to achieving a zero emissions health sector by 2040. This has been achieved through ongoing investments to replace ageing building assets with modern energy efficiency technology, including delivery of all electric health facilities. The total amount of Canberra Health Services waste that was recycled increased by 17 per cent when compared to 2019-20. More than 130 tonnes of organic waste were diverted from landfill during the reporting period, which is an increase of more than 16 per cent when compared to 2019-20. 43 per cent of the total waste generated by Canberra Health Services in 2020-21 was recycled. In May 2022, CHS expects to achieve AXMART accreditation for recycling for the fifth year in a row. Mr Assistant Speaker, World Health Day also provides an opportunity to reflect on and acknowledge the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is an opportunity to convey our thanks to all health workers who have provided exceptional care throughout this pandemic and continue to ensure the ACT community is protected. Since 2020, Canberrans have shown incredible resilience as we've grappled with the constantly evolving challenges of living in a pandemic. I'm so grateful, and I know Canberrans are, for the efforts of our community to stay COVID safe and to be vaccinated to protect themselves and our loved ones. Canberra's primary health workers have supported our community with the continued delivery of healthcare and have adapted their delivery of care in response to public health restrictions and outbreaks. Aged care workers and community health workers, disability support workers have been at the forefront of the pandemic response, providing critical care to elderly Canberrans, people with disability and other vulnerable members of our community. Health workers right across the ACT have worked tirelessly since March 2020 to keep Canberra safe and strong. Today I take the opportunity once again to acknowledge the incredible pressure that this has had on their work and their lives and to thank them once again for their dedication in protecting our community. And I call on the Assembly to join me in thanking these crucial members of our health services. On this World Health Day, I acknowledge and thank the Canberra community for showing resilience in the face of these significant challenges and for showing collective care for our planet, our community and our health. I commend the motion to the